Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. and Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we got a lot to do today in this, this particular hour. And the reason being is that uh, I felt this is very important at this point in time. We're right in the midst of the elections, trying to find folks who are going to lead us out of these issues. We're needing leadership. We need leadership badly. And we also need to, uh, need to know <coughs> that that leadership understand what the issues are that we're having to deal with to resolve some of our many, many problems that we have in these United States. Well, naturally, I can't talk about these United States. It's out there. Well, you can check in on Fox or CNN, but the fact of the matter is, we're talking about local issues right now. I'm talking about the state of Oregon, or better yet, here in the the largest city in in the state of Oregon, which is which is Portland, Oregon, the Multnomah County area, Tri County area, and um, and so I thought it would be I think it would be a benefit right before uh, you're getting heavily involved in selecting the candidates. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea for us to do a show. It sort of kind of gives you a sort of a, a little lead in, ter- in terms of your reason being to get out there and file to run for vote, uh, file to run for office if you haven't filed, and two, to really pick up your voters pamphlet at this point in time and, and really listen and listen to the people who are who are identifying themselves as that leader, your leaders, i.e., remember, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Once you select that particular person, you have then handed that i.e. mantle to that person and then they talk they are then the solution to that issue which you don't know anything about and like many of us we tend to react after the fact well guess what you got to react now and so as a result of that i've got two i got two parts of the show here that will probably maybe give us a sort of an intro uh in this whole issue that i'm talking to the first is i found an organization that i that i've been i've been hey I, i've had the the pleasure to participate with them I mean, it's, it's a very interesting piece, Western Liberty Network. I, I was able to attend the conference that they had, and, and it, was just, it, was just, it was just the point. I.e., they were educating leaders. They were talking to the rationale for being a good leader. Uh, it isn't talking to the issues, just on and on and on. But anyway, it was a beautiful piece. I have them here. That's why I can go just so far in this piece. But we're going to do that for the first half hour. And then the second half hour, we're going to talk about one of the issues that we figure is major here within our environment. And that's with national. We're actually it's going to talk race talk, race talk, race talk. What is the definition of race talk? It's not about just blacks. It's not just about Hispanics. It's not about this. It's not about this. It's race talk. And Donna Max, she does an excellent job. She's been doing it for a number of years, but she's been doing it right here in the Portland metropolitan area. And you're going to really enjoy that particular show, too. So anyway, so let's start off the show with introducing two people that I've known. And now it look like I've known them forever. And now I've, not that I've sought them out, they've sought me out. I'm talking about uh, Richard Burt and Teresa DeBellis. Am I right? Right, yes. All right, that's, mm-hmm. Is that doing right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. And I'll maybe start off with Richard. Richard is the, the director, and then, and then uh, Teresa is part and parcel of his operation. What is Western Liberty Network? Western, by the way, thanks for having us on hey, today. Fine, buddy. Thank you, Chris. Um, sure. Western Liberty Network is a 501c3 educational foundation, and what we do is we teach citizens how to take their power back that's really the summary of what it One is more that time. we do take their power take back. their power that's back. powerful richard I, I think so and you know Teresa had a lot to do with taking the version i had okay. of take your power back and just simplifying it into those few words beautiful uh, but what we do is we give people skills that make them able to engage with their local democratic processes and take positions of leadership in their community. We do that in a variety of ways. We have educational conferences. We do on-site training. We affiliate groups around Oregon and Washington, and we provide live training to them. We provide training technologically, but it it comes to a, a whole series of courses on how to do things like how to run for office, how to assess yourself as a candidate, how to work with volunteers, how to write a campaign plan, Uh, If you're not running for office, how do you manage a campaign? If you don't want to manage a campaign, how do you be a good foot soldier? And then when elections aren't going on, how do you testify in front of public boards? How do you write a good letter to the editor? How do you do a lot of the things that are needed to be effective? 
and to be able to take your power back in your community. And since we've started, over 200 grassroots activists who have taken Western Liberty Network training have gone on to be elected to local offices at a variety of levels, from you know ESD school boards down to you know city councils to cemetery control board. Mm. And some of these folks already are starting to take on higher positions of responsibility. Some are doing fine where they are, but it's all about taking responsibility mm -hmm. for our own governance. And that's what Western Liberty Network tries to facilitate. We don't care what party you are. I, I like that because that's exactly <clears> the <throat> question I was going to ask you. That's one of the things I was really, really impressed with, your yep. nonpartisan approach we to have, this whole piece. We have a limited government mm -hmm. perspective, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of non-affiliated voters. I'm a registered libertarian. Teresa's a registered libertarian. A lot of Republicans show up, even some Democrats. Uh, a guy named Rowe, who's a city councilor out at Coquille. Matt Rowe is his name. Mm -hmm. He actually participated as a trainer in our conference. He's a Democrat. So we don't care what party you are. If you want to take responsibility mm -hmm. for your own governance and take your power back, we have training for you if you want it. Mm -hmm. we, we believe strongly. Um, it's counterintuitive when you hear it, but it's really the principle that is underneath what we're about, and that is the more responsibility you take, the more freedom you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if you take responsibility for, if we take responsibility for our own governance, we will be more free and will not willingly subjugate ourselves to what is becoming a political class. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening now. We're supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, for the people. Mm -hmm. But to some extent, for whatever reason, people have not been taking responsibility for their own governance. They've been letting a political class do it, and we've been losing our freedom. And there comes a tipping point. I don't think we're there yet, but there's a tipping point where the government of the people only becomes that in name. And it really becomes a government of the governing class. Mm -hmm. And we serve them, and we fear them instead of government serving us and government fearing us. So the key here is um, we don't uh, espouse or advocate blame, okay? That's one of the reasons we're, we're happy to be nonpartisan. It, it really isn't about the other party ruining your life for you. And if you immerse yourself in one party, that's the rhetoric you're going to hear over and over. People are bitter and they're angry and they're angry at the other party that they perceive is holding them down and holding everybody's, you know, keeping the system mm -hmm. broken and mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. Um, I believe strongly in no blame politics. Um, it isn't about the other side. Mm -hmm. So once you're willing to let go of needing to have somebody be in the way of you being successful or your country or your, you know, state or your local government being successful, um, then you can really get in there with the issues and, and do yeah. something about solving it. You make a good point about the issue aspect of it because uh, through the years that I've run for office, I felt very strongly about the fact that I knew what the issue was and I knew a solution to the issue. But when I identified myself as a brand, i.e. I'm a Republican, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I, I'm not listened to. And I, naturally I'm from this particular area, the metropolitan areas, it's sort of like taken upon as a, a democratic Mm -hmm. It's Democrats as opposed to Republican or independent. Well, the other entities of the small group don't get the same recognition. Mm, but sure. it's just between the R's and the D's. You know, the Duncan. People uh, become tribal. Yes, yes. And I think the Internet, um, for all of its benefits, and there are many, have amplified the yeah. tribal nature yeah. of this. Because, you know, in the old days when there was only Walter Cronkite and mm -hmm. David Brinkley and Harry Reasoner, they had to do news for everyone. So you heard some things you liked, some things you didn't like. Now with a hundred channels, people only tune into the things that affirm what they believe. Mm -hmm. and but again, so it's the they, issue, though. See, that's that's the thing. On, on the point. issues, on yeah, the issues. Yeah, but right now I'm saying, but that that to me, to me, that was not as recognizable. 
Yeah. It was more of the brand than it was sure. the issue. Mm -hmm. Because if you talk more about the issues, mm -hmm. then you can start talking about solutions. Because then people will react then, well, gee whiz, I'm, now I'm listening, if you will, to the person who might be wanting to run for the office. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, I hear what you're saying, <clears throat> but now what is your solution? I've got my idea, mm -hmm. but right. what's what's yours? Is, exactly. is yours more right. then all of a sudden there's a contribution. Right. Contribution, if you will, yep. to the table. Yep. And then if that person fits, then they and carry this, the ball. And this is where Western Liberty Network is helpful. You know, we don't get into the mess because we don't advocate or oppose any candidate, legislation, or ballot measure. I recognize that when at that conference. That's yep. the thing that I like. But about what that. we do do is we will teach people how to read a budget. We will teach them about ethics laws. We will teach them about how board staff governance works so that when they are ready to talk about the issues, they will have the tools they need to know how to present issues, how to organize them, how to implement them. Mm -hmm. And once you have people doing that, it's easier to pull away from the brand and I mean it's and, and easier to to focus yeah. on the solutions well you know one thing that maybe maybe the viewing artists might might understand kind of like because you guys are the expert on it bring giving a putting the, the ie the, the discussion if you will on the table mm -hmm. through your organization but let's say as a lay person aspect of it I want to run for office mm -hmm. and uh, I may have something on my mind but I just filed I would put the buck, a few bucks down, and this, that, and the other. Or if not that, I'm told sure. that hey, if you go out and get maybe uh, several people that might be interested in saying that we we feel that you're a good candidate, I can come up with a hundred names, and then I don't have to worry about paying the money. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing on the filing form that says what is the issue. That's right. I mean, and so many anybody can come and file, and then all of a sudden we're spending all this time because nowadays, even not now, we've been doing it traditionally. Is that so? The media reacts, if you will. Once everyone is filed, <coughs> then it's the top two. There might be people in the bottom, <laughs> bottom eight that may have more of an idea of the issues mm. yeah. than the top two. Well, the media How likes a horse race. That? How do you deal with something like that? You got to punch through with something that makes you unique. You've got to punch through with uh, you know something that they have to respond to something that people feel passionate about. And what that thing is going to be, I mean, it's really easy to say that, I know, but what that thing is going to be is going to be different for every race and for every candidate because every candidate will have a different set of strengths and weaknesses. You know, we have one of the things we do in the training is we have a self-assessment guide for people yeah. who want to run for office. Yeah. A lot of folks say, I want to run for office, I want to run for Congress, yeah. <laughs> but they don't have any idea what's involved with that. Right, right, right. And it might be better in some cases for folks to start out on a fire and rescue board or a park board or something like that and learn how it works. So we provide you know, a questionnaire that helps candidates assess themselves, not as a person, but as a political candidate. And part of that is what three issues do you feel passionate about? Mm -hmm. What issue are you willing not to change your position on, even if it means losing the election? Mm -hmm. the, what are the strengths and weaknesses politically of each of these issues? It forces you to go down and analyze your approach to government, analyze yourself as a candidate. What, what three things about you are campaign assets? You know, what are liabilities? Name five people who will work to get you elected. Name five people who will work to defeat you. Mm -hmm. By the time you've gone through this, you have a fair idea of what you're going to be working with. You'll have some kind of focus. You'll have the outlines of what could become a campaign plan. And this has been incredibly helpful for folks yeah. to avoid being novices and then walking into a buzzsaw getting into something that's achievable, that's winnable, mm -hmm. where they can learn. And that starts them on the process mm -hmm. of being able to be successful and to be effective. Okay, let me throw something on the table. To, sure. To us, so as far as the discussion, that's what we're doing. Okay, I'm running for office. I've got, I've got a feel for what the <coughs> issue is. Mm -hmm. I filed a run for office, okay? And now I'm ready to go. The media calls me up, mm -hmm. you got me? And, and so they immediately say, well, I want to interview you. So they sit me down, and they've got their own issues mm -hmm. about yeah. position. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've got my issue. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe about the position. Maybe I don't have the right issue. Mm -hmm. Get right. me? And so they sure. were basically said, okay, fine. Now uh, start asking me questions about this, that, and the other. And that's not why I'm there. Mm. Richard, you go talk first, and then I'll talk about Lee Snelling. Sure. Uh, well, what I always tell people is 
to not allow yourself to be pulled off your game. How do you do that? One thing you can do, there's some rhetorical tricks and, and, well, not tricks, but techniques. And Teresa will talk about it in a moment. But basically, what you have to do is acknowledge what they want to know, but just tell them. You're not in the race to talk about that. Okay. You're in the race to talk about these other things. Oh, in, it's the in, only in relationship reason to here. the position. So I know a lot of people care know. about this question, but this isn't why I'm in the race. Okay. I'm not in the race for that. I'm in the race to talk about issue one, two, and three. Right, right, right. And this is why. Right. And, you know, if you can find a segue to make one of their issues relate to one of your issues, okay. then that satisfies them and it also... I mean, a lot of this is done by practice. Well, you're going down that road. Let me ask you a question here about this. What's the possibility? I mean, I'm just throwing this out. What if, if for instance, when you're filing to run for office, mm -hmm. you're also asked to list those three issues? Because the press always wants access to that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So sure. now they've got that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then they'll basically, hopefully, you can hone them in on those issues right. as it relates to print. You're talking about the voter right, pamphlet you. statement yeah. where you talk about what you're going to put in No, there. no, 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 no. I'm talking about the application. When you, oh, when you, when you go to yeah. file to run for mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. you are, you're required to list the issue because the media is waiting to pick it up because what they're at the phone, mm -hmm. saying, yeah. okay, who, oh, they just filed. Bruce, Bruce Wright, oh, no, no problem. Get on the phone. Mm -hmm. Hey, and I'm saying, wait a minute. I want to, no, I want to know. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're, I mean, we're talking about issues here. Um, Really, what we're talking about as well is critical thinking. Okay. So Western Liberty Network works in association with the Snellings, who are speech coaches. Speech coaches. Speech coaches. This is part of what you might need to do if you're going to run for office. Revolutionary be persuasion is the name of their company. Yeah. And I, th I need to, as a point of disclaimer, point out that there isn't a legal relationship between the two, right, but right. we help each other out. Right. So one of the things that happened to me when... Um, I took one of their their classes, okay. and I got up there <clears throat> and I gave my speech, yeah. and they some you know basically said, um, "Do you realize that you're not you didn't you strayed away from the issue? You haven't identified it clearly, et cetera, et cetera." So, they're the ones that were thinking about everything you said and analyzing it and helping you come back and realize what how you just you know answered the question or didn't so this is all you know talking about issues you mm -hmm. know thinking about um how you say what you want to say how you communicate how um whether you're actually dealing with the issues or not those are things that we encourage you to do and that's yeah. part of what western liberty network um offers we tell folks that you're not obliged to answer the questions the media asks you just because they ask you. A lot of folks are intimidated. You're from this paper, you're from this TV station. Oh my God, I have to answer your question your way <clears throat> or else something disastrous is gonna happen to me. That's not it. It's perfectly, it's about who will control the tone and tenor and direction of the interview. Mm -hmm. And if you're running for office, it needs to be you. Mm -hmm. Having said that though, <laughs> one of the things yeah, that true. happens, <laughs> right, is that the issues are not being dealt with. So, exactly. mm -hmm. so yes. what we don't yes. want to say, Richard, is we don't want to say, well, you can just, you know, the, the yeah. media is asking you right. a question, right. you yeah. don't have to answer right. it. I don't right. want to give that message either. Well, you've got to respond to the you've got to respond to the media, don't get me wrong. And if to the issue that you yeah. bring to the table. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you have to do it artfully in such a way that, you know, shows respect respect for the media and gives them something of what they want but it's you know if you're if you're running just to deal with somebody else's agenda why are you running mm -hmm. so yes there's there it, it is a skill to manage an interview when the media has a different agenda than you have mm -hmm. that's why training is important and that's why practice is important mm -hmm. and so we offer some of that but revolutionary persuasion offers practical training in how to pull it off. You know, you make a good point because in all due respect, I can remember during my, when my initial stage when I first got involved in the office, running for office, I was always, I should have gotten the training beforehand mm. to mm -hmm. vet myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> to mm -hmm. find out whether or not my issues were legit. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, you get in there and all of a sudden, hey, I'm running for office. I'm going to be on TV. I'm yeah. going to be, yeah. et cetera, Which is what this is. And this then, is a self vetting. Yeah, but, but my point is that but by the time I get to that point, mm -hmm. hey, I don't think I have the right issue. How do I get out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, one of the, what a big moment for me as well in, that, in their training was when they said, um, you know, they gave us a speech to analyze and they said, now write down the principle that this um, speech um, identified. And I'm telling you, in a room of 35 people, right. not one person could identify the principal. So you see, we're going to college, yeah, we're, we're yeah, getting yeah. educated, right, 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 but it's right. like we're throwing the critical thinking out the window when yeah. it comes to politics. Yeah, right, Just right. like, you know, where are the issues? Yes, How come exactly. they're not on the exactly. table right now? Exactly. Also, uh, character, character mm -hmm. and integrity. Yes. You know, yes. these are things uh, we feel strongly about, but but they're not being discussed in politics mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. now. You know, I, I might, by the way, for the, for the viewing audience, uh, again, this is why we're doing this, because in all due respect, the last filing date is probably about a week away. My point is that March 7th. March 7th or mm -hmm. March 8th or whatever. But my point is that I'm doing this ahead of time. So you may have some ideas in terms of, you, in fact, you might be the, the leader that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. my point. But we're giving you the opportunity to sort of vet yourself you may be interested in going down and then also you may have a vehicle that you can go to and maybe get the kind of things that you need if you will to deal with this issue right. to deal with this army of mm -hmm. folks that are going to be asking you questions right. and this that and the other about your issue and whether it stands up and therefore you're not wasting your time yeah. and your money because it's very expensive too by the way well and, and folks be. folks that want to this training document right. and other ones that are very helpful to candidates are all available online on the training tab of the westernlibertynetwork.org website. All of these are PDFs that right can be there, downloaded. Right it's free. right there. Just free, and it's free. It doesn't and cost money. Not copyrighted either. And you're a nonprofit organization. <clears throat> That's right. But at the same time, you've got, uh, there might be other services that, might, that a person might need. This is, these are not your operations, but you, yeah. at least you know where they are, and you can just, you vet, you've vetted some of these individuals, right? Fair? Uh, we, we help, we give people tools yeah. to do that. Okay. Um, we're not going to decide whether they're, you know, material right. or not. Exactly. We're giving them an opportunity to learn how to be impactful. Right, right, right. Um, Rich, in the beginning you mentioned um, 200 people were elected. Do you remember the percentage of people that go through the training that are elected? It's very high. Very high. It's in the high 70s, low 80s. They get trained mm -hmm. and then get go elected. on to get elected mm -hmm. to office. To really? public office. Right. So how often do you do these conferences? I know you did this one conference, right? You did this, and this was just this was our fifth annual just conference. recently, right? Just recently, January thirty first mm -hmm. was nine. our conference, and it was our fifth annual conference. Okay, we okay. do it every year. Every year. Yep, every year, and we also do a youth conference every year, and we'll do it. We've done it in the spring, but this year we're going to do it. What's the definition of a youth conference? What is that? On? It's designed I, to, to encourage and empower high school and college students to get active in self-governance right away. One of the things that I encourage them to do and is, is to forget about things like student government. Run for a real office. Get appointed for something real. You know, here's how to be effective if, you, if you're working for a candidate. Here's how to be effective for the candidate or, or ballot measure campaign of your choice. We want to show folks that you may be young, but you are powerful. And all you need are a few tools in your toolbox and you're just as capable as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So one of the youngest members we had, what, who was that, Rich? Well, we've had a, a lot of people who were in their early teens that have come to the conference. But there's one person named Kyle Knight out of Baker City who was elected to the Baker City School Board at the age of 18, wow. right out of high school. And right off the bat, he found some credit card shenanigans that had been going on in the district. Mm -hmm. And the Baker City Herald picked it up, and there were recall elections, and you know, a lot of things got cleaned up. The power, on him or the someone power else? Of one no, it person. wasn't him. He found. He, he found. found he found okay. some of so these. He the took, issue. He the took issue. WLN training, and he did not let his age um, make him afraid. That's he took the training. He got elected. He got in there. Not only was he elected to the position, which is a big accomplishment anyway, but he discovered things that were going on that needed to be changed. Wow, wow. That's the power of one person. Yeah, because that, that would have been a, a worry person. right off the bat from the standpoint, are they too young? I mean, mm -hmm. should they have maturity when they get into that situation? Mm -hmm. how, 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 uh, uh, how much do they know about the issues of that respective area? But he picked up that yeah. one piece, right? Yeah. But he also contributed other things. Well, you know, that's why boards are made up of more than one person. Ah. You know, so, uh, for example, I serve as an elected member of the Tualatin Valley Water District Board of Commissioners. 
And also serving on the board are people who have been water engineers for 20 years, civ civ civil engineers. You just I don't have person. any experience at all about that. And you were just a you know, I'm, I'm a small, you know, I was a small business person. Now I run a nonprofit. And uh, it, I add that to the mix. Other yeah. people add other things. Yeah. And this young man was able to add his integrity and his passion and his energy to the things that the other board members had to offer. Great, great. And he fixed it. So uh, we can talk about politics and, and uh, yeah, I wanna, training yeah, I for a I long wanna, time. Because yeah, <laughs> right now it's just trying to excite folks out there who might be willing to want to run for office. Well, we were they very... They can access you on your webpage and this, that's that, right. Other, right? And what is, what is that? What, what is, is Western, that? WesternLibertyNetwork.org. Well, that's it. WesternLibertyNetwork.org. And, you know, we are also very excited, and we've also been very excited at, at what you have done and what other folks have done. Well, thank you, Richard. And And this is why... Um, at our January 31st conference, we gave you the 2016 Don McIntyre Memorial Award, you know, for outstanding activist. You really caught our attention because of your service to our country, but also because of what you have done with Oregon Voters Digest, bringing it, you know, purchasing it in the early 80s and dig getting it in the digital world, bringing it onto televised format and, and now you. on YouTube and, and through what you're doing, you're, you're doing a lot to educate people about issues and you're doing it in a way that shows integrity, that shows character, that shows persistence. Oh, wow, this is the stuff that, you know, makes our country what it can be and what it, what it is, what we strive to have it be. And that is a self-governing society of people who are educated, who are active, and that is why we were very proud to give this award at the Western Liberty Network oh, Richard, conference. Richard, really, thank you very much, buddy. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. so, I really appreciate that. I can read it if you'd like. Oh, well, <coughs> okay, all right, okay. Uh, Western Liberty Network, 2016 Don McIntyre Memorial Award. This is certificate attests that Bruce Broussard, not only was Bruce a member of the Buffalo Soldiers, 9th and 10th Cavalry Association for the U.S. Marine Corps and a Vietnam vet. He personally brought the Oregon Voto Digest, founded in 1915, into the digital age. Wow, I there appreciate that. You know, I, I've got to, I got to say you this though. There are yeah, a couple, there okay. are a couple other, other. I want to make sure I accolade, you know, give, give some, uh, some, some accolades, if you will, to some others. Like for instance, this station. PCM, mm -hmm. the cable medium mm -hmm. aspect of it. Again, you've got folks here where they're giving out the issues and this, that, and the other, Put, talking to issues and things of that nature. I think that, I, I mean, I, I'm sort of overenjoyed with that piece. And the other thing, it's not just me. You know, it's about other folks. I mean, I'm here, mm -hmm. and it's not that I'm here, and I'm, I'm a facility, if you will, to be able to bring folks like yourselves on. To discuss issues. Discuss mm -hmm. issues, discuss <laughs> issues. And if you want to get involved in issues, you can run mm -hmm. for office yes. and talk to solutions. And so that really makes me feel good in, yeah. in terms of why I'm here. And so I want to thank you very much for everybody, even the, the, the guys in the, in, the, in, the, in the studio there and well, sitting in the control room and this, that, and the other. We're all here. Thank, we, want, we want to thank you very much. We really well, appreciate you. you for this yeah. award. Thank you. You know, yeah. enough of us come together, and there will be America for the next generation. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, you know, and, and this is a good time. We've got about another minute or so, but the bottom line is that... Um, this is where we are right now. We've got some very difficult times that we're into right now. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say to folks that, look, it's not, don't don't take the negative side in terms of like the jokes and this, that, and the other, and the things you may be hearing from the national perspective, presidential race. The fact of the matter is, these are key individuals. They may have some key issues and solutions to the issues. we got to get out of that arena and focus on the issues, mm -hmm. which, by the way, we're going to talk, to, I'm going to have you guys come back, and let's see if we can just kind of give them a sort of overview yeah. of the presidential election. The uh, if you if can you do that because I know you, you interviewed all back. these folks, right? Anytime you, got you want us to come so back. So I, yeah. I want you guys to come back so we can kind of talk to them about that when we get right in the midst of this thing. Okay. Is that fair with you guys? Yes. Again, thank, thank you. you. Any lasting comments about one? How to access you guys? One more time. Yeah. Uh, just go to the website westernlibertynetwork.org. You can leave us an email. You, our number is is Your there. Your phone number is on there too. Phone number is right. on there too. Everything you need on the training tab are all of our training documents okay. that you can see. You can see who's affiliated with us. Good. Twenty organizations in Oregon, great, great. including Oregon Voters Digest yes, and K Bridgens. Yes, yes. And, uh, or Bridges, I'm sorry. And um, that is 
they can find out anything they want to know. And so they can always call you too, right? Mm -hmm. After they've read the material, if they, if they can't read it or whatever, they yeah. can give you guys a call, yes, right? please. Oh, this is fantastic. We really, really appreciate that very much. Thank well, thanks you. very much, guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate Thank it very you, much. Bruce. Okay, fine. Well, folks, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back with our next guest. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. As you notice, uh, the first half hour is basically talking to how do you address the issues and how do you prepare yourself and, and, vet, and in fact, vet yourself before you file to run for office because it's a very, a very important position, if you will, i.e. representing the issues for the masses. That's, that's, we go through the voting process, and all of a sudden you're elected, and guess what? You've got to represent that issue. It's very important. So we thought this time around what we'll do is that we will basically give you an issue that is a major issue in our country today. It's called race issues. And, you know, what is the definition of race? Is it just about black folks? Is it just about Mexicans? <laughs> is it just about women issues? Is it just about anybody's issue? The fact of the matter is we're going we're gonna to get a definition of what race talk is all about and why it's such a big issue and how to address that issue. We've got an authority. As you notice, what we've got here, we I'll tell you, that the person that I'm introducing now, her name is Donna Maxey. She's the executive director and founder of Race Talk, and we are fortunate to have her here in the state of Oregon, more specifically in the state, in the city, no, no, in the nation of Portland. <laughs> what about that? I mean, look, look, look at here. I mean, she's been involved. I mean, she's been involved in a number of years. In fact, I just went to one of the one of the, one of her seminars the other night. Uh, it was about police. I mean, when you about police, I mean, it was a nice gathering, and people weren't shooting one another. Folks were in uniforms and in a uniform. She broke out into different groups and whatever. I told her I was going to critique her, but she didn't know how I was going to do it. So I figured, well, I'm going to critique her by bringing her on the show, so she can talk about what is the definition of race talk and and get you involved in that whole process. So with that, there it is. Here's the lady who put this all piece together. How you doing, Donna? I'm fine. First off, thank let, you for having let's, me. Let's 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 acknowledge mom first. How is mom doing? Mom is doing great. She's 96 and going strong. 96. Boy, I tell you, what a gene. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, race talk. Let's get right into it, Donna. 
Race Talk. Well, Why I, do you do I, this? I brought a couple of uh, our posters for you. This okay, is our good. last poster we did, which is Black Girl in Suburbia this year at Race Talks, which meets at McMiniman's Kennedy School. Oh, wow. Uh, we are doing films. Films. And so this was one of our first ones, Black Girl in Suburbia. Uh, the first one we did was 14, which is about birthrights, dreamers. And uh, we'll be showing that one over again in September. Birthrights. Birth rights oh, okay. birth rights you know the movie uh papers yes so we'll be doing that um so here's our brochure race talks um and you were talking about the this is the second tuesday of the month at kennedy school okay you were talking about um the Put that police one forum that was a police forum right so it's a community police forum we have one uh, we are having one almost every month and we talk to the police and we tell the police what we like, what we don't like, and what we'd like to see happen and what we're going to do to help make it happen. I know this is unique. I like the I like the, the way you got the layout here. It's all of us. That's all of us. It's all of us. Everybody. Everybody's on there. Look at look at the silhouettes here. I don't know if you see if you if you see that. I'm well sure now you, you asked about a definition of race. The Give me a definition of race. The definition of race is that um, human species. Human species. We are the human species, okay. and we are all different subcategories of the human species. It's kind of like there's flowers, and then there's gardenias, azaleas, and underneath gardenias, there's different kinds. Under azaleas, there's different kinds. So, I mean, we're just like any other species on the planet Earth. There are different, different colors, different configurations. Um, why don't we're we understand it? Why don't we understand it? Well, that? we're we're point? mammals. We're mammals. We're mammals, and there's the pecking order. Oh, and so tribes. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's the peck. Well, n not even not just tribes? The tribes. I mean, there's the, the pecking, pecking order. order of who is the alpha. You know, um, and so within each subgroup within the family, there's an alpha personality, and then within the community and, and the tribe, and on and on and on. It goes a lot, you know, and, in the, and then in the world, there's uh, the country that's the most powerful country in the world, and that's supposed to be the United States, but actually, right. China's pretty powerful because they have more money to spend. And people. Uh, yes, and, and people. Billion. 1. So, billion. so um, I started Race Talks because it, the actual title is Race Talks Uniting to Break the Chains of Racism and uh, an opportunity for to dialogue. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we talk. We have speakers the first hour or a film, and then the second hour we break into small groups and talk about issues uh, that go along with that particular topic. Lots of interesting topics. We're in our sixth year. I'm very excited about that. And this year we are um, showing films because this is my year to write grants and get funded. Okay. I've been doing this gratis so far. It was gratis. Like, gratis. Gee, it, was, it was is it was something that I knew if I didn't yeah. do it, it wouldn't happen. It hadn't happened anywhere before, to my knowledge. And so um, I figured we needed to be talking. Uh, by 2040, there will be more people of color than there are white people, mm -hmm. and I knew 20 years ago that what's happening now is, is what was going to happen, is that white people were getting frightened. Mm -hmm. A lot of violence is occurring. There are a lot of deaths, and um, a lot of white people are afraid. They're afraid that people of color are going to do what has been done to them. Um, and you know, but that's a tough transition. I mean, if I'm white and I'm thinking about, well, gee, I'm not, I'm not going to be in charge anymore. How do I deal with it? How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? Kind of like you do if you get a new job. If you're mm -hmm. the boss at one job and you lose that job, and then you go to another job and somebody else is the boss, you have to work to fit in, okay. Okay. and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But it is something that has to happen. And and if what you want is to have peace and to have harmony, then you make it happen. Mm -hmm. You do what you have to do to make it happen. Um, we as humans, and, and as I said, we're mammals, we tend to like to have a pecking order. And who wants to give up their privilege? Mm -hmm. You know, but I think at the same time, we have to look and say, what's fair? You know, we're arguing that the 1% is not paying their share fair, share fair of uh, taxes. Well, then the majority of people who are of color in this country are not getting their fair share of the goods and services that are due to all of us as human beings in this world, in this country. You know, I noticed that at that last seminar that you had, that little session that you had in regards to police, Portland police. And I noticed that uh, Joanne Bowman, yes. who happens to be the president of the NAACP, 
And I noticed when she was making a presentation, she had made a point about a particular issue of concern with the police department. And then, then, the, uh, then the police tried to react. It just so happened to be an African-American. He was a, a, a Daryl. Daryl. Turner. Turner. And she, she made a statement about something, and then he said no, and she said, she said no. She said no way. This is the way it is. And then he just sat down, and, and it just kept on going. But I, I liked it that because there was a very mixed group, very mixed group aspect of it. No other, the other officers were there. They were very attentive. I mean, people were talking back and forth to one another. I was very impressed. In fact, one of the senior chiefs of the Portland Police Department started also reacted from the standpoint of uh, uh, along that particular line about how he was sort of harassed when he took a trip. Remember, he was talking to, about this trip. He is a he is a assistant chief, and he was having problems with police. He was afraid to say hello to the New York police. To the New York police. And see, I that? must be crazy because when I was in New York, I, I spoke to the ones in the subway. You Jesus know, we were going to the subway, and I said something to him. And he, like, he was he wasn't very. Friendly. I said, well, you must be having a very busy Gee. day. And he's so white. Let you go. And he's a white guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we all, when we're out of our element, yeah. are intimidated. And so we have to learn to acclimate to where we are. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like about what happens at Race Talks and Chief uh, Assistant Chief Modica, who was also there, Modica, who was, was an there, African American, uh, and, 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 and Krebs has said too, the reason we started the police community forums is yeah. because the police were so amazed that we had a forum. It originally started back in November of 2014, and we had a program called uh, Driving While Black. And so we had the police there to talk about what people are supposed to do when they when they're stopped by the police. Mm -hmm. And two attorneys, Marion Marion Highland and uh, James Melvin Odin Orr, put together a, a phone app called Driving While Black, hmm. so that you can study it before you get stopped by mm -hmm. the police, mm -hmm. and you can figure out what you need to do to be to make sure you come out of that um, out of that situation alive. Did police sign off on that? On that particular? Um, you know of? Yeah, they they were there and okay. and what what was mostly interesting to them is that it was a very peaceful okay. occasion mm -hmm. and nobody was screaming and hollering at them. And you know, I was like to say I'm I'm a th former third grade teacher. That means warm cookies, cold milk and everybody acts nice. <laughs> so, uh, we have some ground rules that we follow yeah. and yeah. you know, the whole idea one of the things that we talk about is agreeing to disagree. Okay. If I try to force you to agree with my point of view, then you're going to get angry and then either shut down or come back at me. So the whole idea is just listen to what a person has to say and don't counteract what they're saying. You were saying that Joanne and Daryl, yeah, that Daryl just that, yeah. let her talk. You know, and what happened, I remember the incident specifically, yes, is that Daryl said, well, this is the way it is. And Joanne said, no, that has changed. Yes, exactly. I was at city council meeting yesterday, and this is what they said. Right. And so what's his argument? There is none. He had to hear what she had to say. Now, he might not agree with it, but that is what, you know, is the reality is. You know, if you don't so, mind, if you don't mind, since we're, and when we get right back into a lot of things, well, history, into this, but since it's fresh on your mind, because that was the last one. What one? What was the purpose of that particular session, and what do you, do you feel that we got something out of it, and do you feel that the community got something out of it? On the on the police piece, that was the well. The week. purpose of the the this forums police. period is to allow the public to come and meet with okay. the police, and to have Daryl Turner there was quite a coup. I because, guess it was. I'm still because, trying to get him here. Because <laughs> uh, I've been trying to get Daryl to come for a year. Really? So he came. Some of the beat cops came. Um, I'm in the process of talking to the police right now about doing possibly some high school police forums. And I'm hoping to get those done before the summer at some of the uh, schools that have primarily Latino and African American students so that the kids can get a chance to know who the police are and the police can get a chance to know who the kids are. Because you're less likely to do something stupid if you know a person. You're less likely to shoot right. a kid if you know who that kid is and you have, a, have the R word. And mm -hmm. I don't mean race, I mean relationship. Okay. So it's all about establishing relationship and that's what the purpose of these forums is, is to establish relationship. So what did we get out of that? What did you get out of that, that particular session? 
Well, we, we're doing them all over the city at the no, various I mean, that, high schools. What did we one. get out of this one? Yeah, yeah. So um, police piece. What we, do you think? Well, we had we a, got we we had got a beat, here. We had a beat cop whose last name is Maxie. White guy. So uh, he's trying to figure out if he's my cousin. So <laughs> <laughs> Race talk. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Okay. So that was that was one of the that things. That, that yeah, was that, yeah. Hey, know, that we, we had him, oh, and yeah, and then I just spoke to a woman today who came, and um, and and I was so taken by this woman because she was so determined to be there. At we were at Madison High School, and at Madison we're in the cafeteria. The cafeteria is all the way at the back of the campus. Right. This woman uh, is in a wheelchair, a yes. walker chair, and she walked from 82nd like two blocks all the way back to the cafeteria to be there and um she, it was a wonderful experience and i had a chance to talk to her today and talk to her about what she thought about the forum mm -hmm. and she felt very enlightened by it she felt that she learned a lot about relationships between the police and the public uh, and said she will be back to more. Oh, wow. Wow. That that was huge. I mean, yeah. I, I had the opportunity to meet her also at that point. That young white woman, very mm -hmm. neat lady. That's like that. I like that. By the way, I mean, another point I might make is that it, you, it was unique that you got Daryl there because it's a rarity because Daryl is the president of the police union for the city of Portland. Right. And you don't have that many black guys that are president of the police. And you did a coup. You got you got something. I'm, I'm going to take it off from that point. And he's a really neat guy. But the fact that we have the opportunity to talk about the issues as it relates to police in a very civil way, and we're going to take advantage of that. That's one of the reasons why I, I want to definitely get involved, and I wanted us to reference that particular conference. Well, piece. our next move is to get the chief back again and to also get the mayor to come. Oh, you're going to have so, the mayor? So that's well, you're the looking plan. at the next one, so you don't have to worry okay. about that. we get hey, that done. Hey, gotcha. Okay, we'll gotcha. we get that done. It no works problem. for me. So I want, to, I want to share uh, the poster again, <laughs> Race Talks. Okay, good. And here's our brochure, and we will be at McMinniman's Kennedy School next Tuesday, March 8th, uh, from 7 to 9. Come early. Doors open at 6 o'clock, so you can get a seat, uh, and you can get food and beverage. I believe you should do things that are difficult over over food because it gives you indigestion yes, if, if yes, you get contentious. Yes, yes. I'll give you so, the menu before you leave. Will okay, you? thank I'll you very you much. <laughs> thank you very much. So, um, Donna, how long have you been doing this? I, got, I want to make sure I get as what, much race as talks? This. Yeah, how long have you been Six doing Six years. This? Six years. Six years. This Six is our years. sixth year. But you asked me to come and bring some uh, talk about Black History Month. Yes. Oh, yeah, Black and History so Month. Yes, let's I, do that. In doing so, I first of all wanted to wear my colors. Oh, so yeah, no, these are like these are black national colors: red, black, and green. The red stands for the blood. Yeah, green okay. stands for the land, and black stands for our skin color. So um, I'm very proud to be an African American, and I have not stepped foot on the motherland yet, but it is my goal to get there. Oh my God! My, my, uh, you I, and me I too. might I might lay on the ground and yes. wallow in yes, the dirt. Yes, you know, me and you too. but uh, I am so excited about um, about our culture. Yeah. As a child growing up, there was nothing that said I, I existed. Uh, the closest it got was Mighty Mouse. So Mighty Mouse was one of my heroes. He was the only black person I saw on TV <laughs> was Mighty Mouse. Okay. So um, that was very exciting for me. But my parents educated us mm -hmm. about our culture. I remember we had, uh, they talked about it. They, when they were in college, they were in the NAACP, they, mm -hmm. which was at the time a radical group and similar to what people thought the Panthers were. And so they had a whole series of pictures, and we talked about those people all the time. And I'd always go out and look at those people and read about them. Marian Anderson, A. Philip Randolph, um, Thurgood Marshall, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, um, Peanut Man. Peanut Man, Peanut Man. Pe oh, uh, yes, okay. George got, Washington George, Carver. George Washington Carver, yes. George Washington Carver, Carver, Carver yes. uh, Booker T. Washington. Um, you name it. You, there were people on those posters, and it was it. You know, it was just one of those things that grew up being proud. And you notice I have an array of books oh, here, yes, all and these place. books are. I I yeah. credit my sister, uh, Carolyn oh, Galena Easterly, with turning me on to having my own library. Wow. She was the first yeah. person I knew that had her own library. So I'm going to share a few of these yeah. books and their titles yeah, and a little bit of what they're about. Yes, yes, yes. So no this first one is called okay. um, African 
It's the Encyclopedia of the African and African American Experience. It's full, as you can see, it is full of, um, it's a resource book. So it, it will tell you a whole lot of things. Yeah, here's my favorite, McKinley Burke. Now McKinley, a local guy, but McKinley I tell you. Burt Jr. was a one of um, my teachers. <laughs> he was he was a brilliant man. Taught at Portland State University. Yes. He did a couple of books. This is a couple of versions of it. But uh, Black Inventors of America, yeah, just to name a I'm, few things that were wow. invented by African Americans. Uh, the pencil sharpener, the street light. Uh, what what do you call that? That soaker gun or whatever, that big soaker gun yep. that kids play with now, that was invented by an African-American. Wow. Uh, the that technology for caller ID. Uh, t the telephone was worked on with a Alexander Graham Bell. There were inventions that were done by an African-American man. The layout for uh, Washington, D.C. is now finally being called, having been done by a black man. Wow, wow. Uh, I believe it was Benjamin Banneker. He was the mm -hmm. first uh, African-American to build a working parts clock, uh, the first American to build a working parts clock here on, the, on this land. So um, he laid, he did the layout for for Washington, D.C. Originally, the story went that his master had done it, and then he... Uh, the blueprints were lost and they burned up wow. and and that the slave had a photographic memory but now they're telling the truth wow, wow. so uh stoplight pencil sharpener the uh the box that we use for putting mail in um parts on the car refrigerator cars for for uh trucks uh, pieces of cars, I mean, just on and on and on. Uh, if you wear a shoe that has stitching around the bottom on the edge of the sole, the last machine that was done by an African-American man, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, if you go and get a transfusion, the blood bank, uh, Charles Drew, who yep. died, yeah. who died because he couldn't get a transfusion, wow. even though he was the one who had come up with the transfusion. Um, first, I think the op first open heart surgery was done yeah. by an African-American yeah. Uh, lots of things that African Americans have been the first. Let's not forget on. Herman Brain did a piece. Didn't, didn't Herman do a piece? He did a piece about um, about famous inventors or whatever along that line. You know, Herman. I, I, I'm not sure, but I'm sure he did. Get, get okay, so let me go quick because well, I got a yeah, bunch of yeah, yeah, box here. But while okay. you're doing that, I'm gonna still ask you: Are they in the library too? Do they have those in the library? These books Why can be they? purchased at the library. Some can be purchased at the libraries. Well, um, I'm talking about the school library. Portland Public School, the largest school, do they have a library? Do yes, they, they have, do. do they there have are these books? few that are there. Um, I would suggest that you go online and find many of these books. Uh, I'm a retired teacher, but the truth of the matter is, is that there are only so many things. And um, there are some that are there. But Portland Schools has downsized its library. It downsized? To, it has downsized because now a lot of it is online. So, um, you need another race, race issue uh, conference. Uh, so, anyway, <laughs> skipping on here to another okay. book The Black Tradition in American Dance. This is a okay. picture of Judith Jameson, who nice, was nice. the head of the Alvin Ailey dancers. Wow. Um, I like that. This one is interesting too Black collectibles sold in America. There are a lot of um, different things that, that are used by African Americans. And this is a great picture here. It shows an uh, African-American doll with little um, little bows or something on the, on the head. They call them pickaninnies. Pickaninnies. Pickaninnies okay. and okay. eating watermelon. Okay. And this is called repatriation. This is ah. called taking the stereotypes that have been used negatively mm -hmm. against you and mm -hmm. taking them and making them a point of pride. Mm. So that's what this is about. Well, this is history. This, I mean, full of this is American history. Fair? It's, Fair it's still enough. American it's a, history. It okay. is, but you know, if you're not in the books, then you have to put yourself there. Yeah, All right, okay. here's this is the or Oregon Historical Quarterly from the fall of 2010, wow. and this is we're going to defend ourselves. This is a story about the Portland chapter of the Black Panther Party and the local media response. So this is this right whole now own book. library right here. Hey, this whole I I believe most of this book is about this. The first story in it. Gee, yeah. um, this one. This is a beautiful one. This is Van Der Zee. Mm -hmm. Edward Van Der Zee um, was a photographer, and he took pictures of many of the up-and-coming people, uh, African Americans in New in New York. I do believe it was. This uh, is probably yeah, yeah. this Those is probably soldiers there. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's all kinds of 
people here and it tells their story and who they were and what they did. This book, this is a book by a friend of mine. It's it's written by Marilyn Bradford mm -hmm. uh, and it's illustrated by Johnny Walker. It's called Beauteous Black and the Mysterious Forest. And this is a really interesting, it's a fairy tale about Beauteous Black. It's in Spain. And the part that's so amazing is it tells the story of the Moors in Spain. Mm -hmm. And it's a story that many people don't know, but it kind of gives some historical background. What I like mm -hmm. so much about this book is the pictures are beautiful. Um, and not only are the pictures beautiful, but it talks about, mm -hmm. you know, there's natural, there are African features. It's not trying to, to look somewhat white. It's Afri African features and the hairstyle of full lips, which people are paying, white folks are paying to get nowadays. Um, you know, it, it's just a wonderful, beautiful Neat. book. And Neat. it has, not only is it a, it's, it's a fairy tale, it's based on fact. It's uh, her, in fact, her father, the story of Beauteous Black is taken and it it's, uh, talks about her father who was, um, where the Rock of Gibraltar came from. Okay. He was okay. called the Rock. Okay. And uh, this book even has a, um, it has a glossary. Wow, of words wow. and everything. So this is an amazing book for well, a look, fairy tale. We got about a minute. Book. I want to make sure we kind of close this point in time. But the bottom line is a couple of things I want to say. Okay. This is by again because it's a Black History Month. I'm going to give you another challenge. To give you something to work at. What's that? You know, within our midst, there there was a group of kids from Portland Community College that said we need to have White History Month. You yes. Know, maybe you might be able to put together a forum and bring those kids in and then maybe talk about that issue. We have White History Month every month. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do, but my point is that I want to make sure that the viewing audience understand where we're coming from. Well, it's it's just what back I want the viewing audience to understand is to that me. if everyone were included in the History Month, we wouldn't have to have a Women's Month, a Latino Month, a Black History Month, a Disability Month, you know, pick a number. We wouldn't okay. have to have those months okay. because everyone's story would be in the book, but everyone's story isn't in, isn't the, book. in the book. Okay. And in That's fact, just, just to let you know, the state of Texas is what, um, who determines what the yeah, textbooks exactly. are like. Exactly. The state of Texas has decided that slavery earns about half a page and that they are not longer called slaves, are called servants. Oh my God. So, Sounds good. Well, guess what? We're here. You got to be here for the second half, right? I got to get you back here, okay? Well, folks, there you get. You got Black History Month today. Now, that's the rationale for having it. And we want to thank you. Again, this is an issue. In fact, it's a political issue right now. We've it got is. an election issue. So now you've learned something. Go to the library, pick some of this stuff up. And I'm going to have Donna back on again to talk about this after the election. And will you flash our brochure again? Yes, let's, let's get this brochure. We got this brochure. Here it is right here. Race Talk, folks. Right here. You got a beautiful piece. Go, go to the website, too. Where's that uh, website? Show, show the, Where's that website? Show Real quick, like. We're on Facebook. We're on Facebook. She's on Facebook. And we do have red. Right, there we go. Facebook. And we do have Race Talks. We you have a race, talk. race Talks website. Sounds good. It's it's getting better. It's it's new and fledgling, but it's getting better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank folks. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. See you next time. So this, this is, is one. Yeah, this keep is, doing, keep doing this is the grace of science. Like this that. is Michelle Norris. Wow. This is a deep book. She's